Welcome everybody to the Mind, Body, and Soul Show on this beautiful Thursday afternoon. I'm your host, Coach Steve Toth, uh, the founder of Conscious Evolution Media as well as Real Coaching Radio and TV Network. Our two beautiful, gorgeous guests today are Catherine Crawford Wheat. Uh, he, she is an author, also a speaker and a blogger, and uh, we also have Cindy Denon. She's also a blogger, and they're both responsible for this uh, absolutely incredible site called Women's Insight. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank nice you for having you. us. <laughs> absolutely. All right, so um, l let me ask you the usual question that I ask uh, pretty much everybody uh, that comes on to the Mind, Body, and Social, which is, which is I'm looking for you to reveal to us, to our viewers, who you really are without all the titles that anybody has ever called you or you have used. So who is really Catherine and Cindy? Well, um, I would say that inside I am, uh, I don't know, empathetic, joyful, uh, determined, motivated, uh, somewhat of a free spirit. Uh, I don't know. I, I would say that my description over the years have changed a little bit, Steve. I think as I have grown um, older, I have become uh, less worried about what people think of me. So I've become more also free spirited and crazy and just living, trying to live my life to the fullest every day. So even if I go through some type of uh, hardship or uh, whatever happens in daily life, I just try to kind of smile and laugh right through it. Yeah, fantastic. That's actually, you know, I, I feel that conscious evolution media is kind of a kind of a laboratory of um, of growth and consciousness. And we've done fourteen thousand of these shows, and there's some common themes that people share with us. And one of the things you just shared is that that's kind of a sign that you have arrived to a level of consciousness where things are becoming easier and easier in our lives, meaning that we don't, we, we know how to manage our emotions, meaning that when people no longer are wondering or worried about what other people are thinking of them and really realize that whatever people are saying about you, it's really not our business. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Absolutely. And, you know, I have one of the things I taught my kids growing up was that all you have to do is live your life in such a way that no matter what anybody says about you, the people that know you and love you know who you really are, and the rest of it doesn't matter. Right on. So, I, you know, try not to, to take on other people's. Uh, perceptions doesn't make it true yeah yeah definitely so I'm really curious about how did you create this site called women's insight and um, how do you how do you provide value and how do you serve people with it well the site was sort of created uh, during a time in my life that was in great transition. I was going through a divorce. My oldest child was uh, graduated from high school and my baby was very quickly approaching that milestone and I had a lot of things that were changing and had a lot of things to figure out and Cindy and I actually began talking about doing a website together and we wanted to focus on something that had to do with women, which we both felt we had a little bit of knowledge about <laughs> by this point. We were both in our 40s and had lived enough to have learned some things that we wanted to share with other people, women and men, actually. Yes. I mean, I think that uh, from Catherine and I, we have been friends now for about 25 years. And we look back and um, realize a lot of it. Well, you must have been just babies then. <laughs> yeah, we were like 10. <laughs> but we realized that over the years, you know, how we had helped each other through these, um, you know, uh, diversities in life. Um, actually, our stories were not so much uncommon. So, um, you know, we have kind of the site kind of sprouted through that. Um, 
you know, some of the things that were, Catherine was going through in her life at the time, and also the things that we had been through as friends um, together, and just telling those stories also in the site. Some of them are happy, some of them are sad, some of them are inspirational, but nonetheless, I think all of them uh, have messages, life messages in the, in the stories. Oh, huh, fantastic. So, in, in, terms of, in terms of some of those stories that would you be willing to share, I'm kind of interested first, maybe some of the challenges. You know, we have also learned that, that whatever people's biggest challenges are in life, they become really a master of it. And that's what they end up teaching uh, later on in life when they really figure out who they are to <laughs> well, other that's people. That's really the truth. Absolutely. Yeah. You're absolutely right, right Steve. Um, I think it's those those types of obstacles that we face every day um, that actually allow us to, you know, get smarter and stronger and uh, more ready to deal with the things that um, the next one that happens. I, I will tell you or share with the audience that when Cindy and I were actually beginning to think about doing this online magazine, our computer skills were uh, lacking, to say the least. <laughs> the only thing that here's zero <laughs> right here, and we were about ten rungs below the zero. <laughs> the only thing that I knew how to do on a computer was send an email. And here we were thinking of doing this computer-based business. Now, Cindy's computer skills were a little bit below mine. <laughs> she actually taught me how to send an email. <laughs> so I actually, uh, when we decided that we were going to go ahead and do this, which came after a lot of thought and consideration and a lot of people thinking that we had completely lost our minds, um, I signed up for a computer class that taught me things like how to cut and paste and what a URL was and all these things and we have really come a long way in the last I'd say three and a half four years we really have uh, wow. in, in our knowledge but really it was it's kind of been uh, the fact that we have been very motivated I tell people I had no plan B and so I believe that when your back is up against the wall that uh, your motivation is really strong and you can be very driven when, uh, you know, failure is not an option. Well, and of course, you know, over the last three and a half years, I mean, you know, I always hear people say, if I could just go back, if I only knew then what I know now, or people always say, if I could just go back. Um, I think Catherine and I collectively, we don't believe in that. I think yeah. everything's about the journey, and uh, we wouldn't take anything back. So, um, you know, having those minute skills <laughs> starting out, it was it's just part of our, it was just part of our journey. Yeah, yeah, I agree, and and it's it, it's funny because for me, what what it's really about is uh, I'm no longer that much interested in about what I know. Um, matter of fact, uh, the more I think I know, the less I really know. I'm more interested <laughs> in I'm really interested in what I don't know that I don't mm -hmm. know. Absolutely, right. and uh, it's funny. I think you have to live a little before you exactly. realize that. <laughs> and when, when, when Catherine speaks, uh, one of the messages that she gives you is that it's okay to say, I don't know. It's okay to, to not know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. um, and, and that's really kind of, if you really think about it, it's really a strong message. Um, that it's okay not to know. You can, you know, you, you're can always learn what you don't know. You just have to decide what you're willing to learn and what you're uh, willing to do to figure it out. Yeah, exactly. But what do you? How do you feel about what needs to be there in t in terms of people being awake and being conscious? And there's more and more people are, are joining that part of the camp. Uh, I feel uh, you know by the thousands, maybe by the hundreds of thousands every day. Um, what what's the one of the biggest um, in, in create, in, ingredients that people need to have in, in order to grow and in order to be on this journey that you're speaking of? Uh, I would say awareness and desire, and a and being very very open minded to learning new things, not being closed minded mm -hmm. about what's ahead of you, and 
the fact it, that you don't, that it's something that's a mystery or something that you don't know and that you're afraid of it, you can't. You just and and confidence too. Absolutely, you can't uh, be fearful. You have to have some self confidence in your abilities. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have self-confidence in myself to learn what I don't know. And I think that's a very important ingredient. So if you don't know what you're basically saying, if you don't know it, that's no big deal. Uh, you'll, you'll find out. Absolutely. Or you'll get, you'll get some help from somebody. If um, I want to know, if I want to... And you'll, fig you'll figure it out. There's no exactly. shame in not knowing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right, right. If, if I want to know, know something badly enough or learn something badly enough, you can bet your sweet britches I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was just a little taste of South. Right there. <laughs> so the thing that one of the things that jumped out at me when I was on your website is the the man cave thing. Would you right. would you figure? <laughs> All right, so <laughs> so um, I I I have this request that put me to the test uh, in regards to the man cave thing. Uh, awesome. Ask, Ask me, ask me something that you usually deal with in the man cave um, area of your website. Well, it's funny, you know, we uh, we have a about eighty percent, well, about seventy or eighty percent of our readership are women, and so we have our readers. They send in these questions that they want to ask our men readers, and they can. They're all over the spectrum, you know. You you never know what you're going to get with our with our mm -hmm. readers. Um, but our most recent question. Well, go for it. <laughs> okay. Are you ready for this? Our most recent question, which actually will not come out on the ma in the magazine until uh, tomorrow. Wow. Um, our question, a series of questions asking men, how do they feel about women who get uh, enhancements to their body? Uh, you know, we've got this whole big thing with the duck lips that are really popular with the women and the <laughs> pump it up and the nip and the tuck and everything. And we, you know, we just want to know, and uh, you know, a lot of women, it happens with a lot of the, uh, women in television these days. Um, yeah. Yeah. One day you see them and they're, the next time you see them, they don't even look like themselves anymore. So uh, we had a reader that wanted to know a, a man's opinion about uh, women that do this. And if they have wives or girlfriends themselves that do it, and do those wives or girlfriends ask their opinion? Mm -hmm. So um, it's, kind of, it's kind of a complex series of questions. Um, so what's your take on it, Steve? Well, um my second wife, actually, I, I've been divorced twice. So my second wife actually never used any makeup. And, and she was beautiful and she was gorgeous just the way she was. That's great. And the, the way I feel about it is, um, and, and, and it's not really an opinion. It's just the way I feel about it is that I, I feel that those people that have the need to do that, um, and that's okay, um, they focusing too much on on the outside world and the answers I found that the answers to all of our questions that we came here for is is inside of us it's not out there so we can change our external our external way of, of looking um, but that's not going to make any changes inside of us yes exactly I, I totally we're agree. still going to be the same person <laughs> but it's actually more and, difficult to make those I, changes on the inside <laughs> <laughs> and somebody wanted to do a show with me the other day, and, and I can't say the word because it's it's not nice. But he wanted to do a show with me, how not to be ass wipes, you know, like <laughs> like how do you how can you show up <laughs> so that you that you are nice and and respectful and um, and you're just a nice person because too many people are these days, especially it's the feedback I got from him are just too angry and and too impatient and too nasty how, how do you find that to be to be to be true or accurate I believe uh, actually that the people that are more focused outwardly are the people that are um, I guess not really focusing on the right things like you said I believe they are just looking at surface issues and not tapping into what's on the inside and most likely those are the people that are not happy. They're not mm -hmm. satisfied with who they are and so they keep trying to go for a quick fix. Mm -hmm. you know, 
fix something on the outside and, and it'll make me happy when really their issues are much deeper than that and, and honestly more difficult to tackle than uh, a few wrinkles. <laughs> yeah, or, or, or bigger lips or bigger breasts, yeah. <laughs> you ladies are so lucky how easily people can change those things. We're not, we're not, we're not so lucky as men. Well, I mean, we're not totally, we're not, I mean, you know, it's funny. We, I've seen some men that are, you know, especially like in television, uh, there are a few notables that are, they do it too. I mean, they, um, and I don't know what's, if it's because they feel like they have to because they're in front of the public eye. Or, um, or if it's just something else, you know, that's kind of a deeper. I I know issue. that there is definitely a bit of a double standard. With I mean, you don't see old women in TV very often, but you definitely see old men in TV, and so mm. there's a little bit of a double standard. Yeah, there's and more I, of an acceptance of that, I believe. I, I get that, and people I, are more forgiving. And I'm yeah. a proponent well. of wearing makeup and coloring my hair, and and you know some of the uh, enhancements that women have available to them. Yeah, I, 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 we do I, certainly I, have our no makeup days, though. <laughs> I mean, we check those off on the calendar. So yeah, yeah. No, I think I think you just hit on something because um, I, I feel I feel that um, in in many industries, including including television, we still have what I call the the, the good old men's club. Uh, they still run the show, <laughs> and they do let women in, but uh, I think they do it because because of what the public would think if they didn't. Right. And, yes. But if they had their way, they would prefer not to have any women on, on their team whatsoever. And, um, and I think, and I so don't do feel... Think, do you think that it's insecurities within themselves, or what do you think the reason for that is? I, I think the reason for that is, is because man is, is being, has been that way for so many years, for... For centuries, man has ruled the world, and and I can give them a lot of credit, and I also I can I can say that they're responsible for a lot of the mess that we have today. So um, and and they they unfortunately have forgot and never been in the presence of who really women are. I mean, I mean for me, women have something that we men don't have and will never have and that is that you can have a child and because you can do that and you can be a mother you you understand something about birth and something about this magical thing that happens and the connection that you have inside of you with another live human being that we will never have and because of that for example what I know about this today I would never start another business without a woman being on my team. You know why? Because you from a different because you know how to birth. A business is no different than having a baby. <laughs> you know how to birth a baby and how to take care of it. And so so women this is like an instinct that you have. It's in your DNA. It's not something you learn. You are born with it. This is true. Um, but I do believe that um, and I don't disagree with any of that, but I do believe that you kind of um, as a person, whether you're male or female, um, you have the opportunity to carve out your own place in life. And where I say that I, you know, Catherine and I were just talking about this earlier today, it's funny that we're talking about, the, you know, this subject. Um, I do recognize that, yes, there is still a double standard. But let me tell you something. If what I make of myself is my, is, is my own doing. And so uh, I definitely would not blame it on the double standards or it's a man's world or, or, or any of that. I mean, I've been married to my husband for 25 years. I love men, you know? <laughs> and, um, you know, there's a great many of them in the world. So I just, I just think that um, as a female, that whatever you make of... You know, whatever you pick to do is is of, under, of your own making is what I'm trying to say. You know, I truly believe that. Well, and I, I really do. I believe that men and women are meant to complement each other. Exactly. We are meant to do things together. And I, like you said, you would never start another business without a woman on your team. And that kind of goes along with 
Yes, what we were talking about earlier today. I mean, you know, we, we do, we meet men every day that are just total other end of the spectrum. I mean, you know, they think that women should fall at their feet, and we recognize that. And, you know, have we, a good laugh. We have a good laugh about it, um, but we don't take it personally, and we don't get mad about it. We just, you know. And then there's the women that, uh, the reason we were talking about this earlier is because I actually went to a meeting last night not knowing what it was and anything about it, and it was kind of a man-haters uh, <laughs> women empowerment movement kind of thing and I actually walked out which is difficult for me to do uh, I always want to respect people and I I'll almost have never walked out of something just out of respect for the person that is making an attempt to do something but I was so opposed to the things that they were talking about that I did get out and walk out uh, because it was a bunch of women that um, mm -hmm felt like they needed to fight uh, to get on top and I, I don't agree with that at all. Interesting. Well, and, and really that's, that's, how, that's how I feel about the women's movement is that in a lot of ways it has backfired because what they basically repeated is they repeated what men has been doing which is, which is you know, every time you see um, and I experience these, these these kind of movements. I, I have I have um, women coaches come through our network, and they even say on the air that they will they're only interested in coaching women, and and only interested in supporting women um, getting more powerful and you know and, and realizing their power. And, and what I'm saying is that um, that's no different than so excluding the other the other side <laughs> is something. Um, Man has earned a PhD in, and and women. If women are going to duplicate that, it, it's not going to work. It already hasn't worked. Right. right. So if women there's anything don't need that, to turn into men to be correct, successful. Correct. Correct. No, not at all. You you can be. I mean, there's there's tons of powerful women that that are in the world uh, that can be in the world and still be women and still be very feminine and and mm -hmm. uh, uniquely women. Yeah, it's actually for me. It's a turn. It's a turn off when right. I when I see women trying, you know, in, in the pants. And I was in the corporate world, and I was just smiling, and I was like, and like, okay, so why don't you just go through a sex change operation? <laughs> that would be probably better. Wearing the man suit. And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I asked me, Catherine. I was like, so were you scared? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't scared. I did watch my back when I got up and left. <laughs> so, so it's really, I think it's really about coming together and um, and and be a team and work together. Exactly. You know, accomplish some some important goals that we can we can put in front of us. It's really not about you know I'm against you and you against me. Um, it's 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 all about community and it's all about working together. And I don't even pay that much attention to um, to gender anymore. I mean, people ask me about these things, and I go, I don't, I see people as human beings. I don't see them as male or female. It's, it's not that big of a deal to me. Right, right. And I think, um, I guess traditionally men have been very competitive. They've grown up playing competitive sports, especially from our generation. And you don't see that many women uh, in their 40s and 50s that have grown up being athletically competitive and so they don't really get how you function in business and compete in a respectful way most women well I know I'm really not competitive I, I have always felt that it's not a me or you situation it, it can be both of us there's plenty of room for everybody to be successful and um, you know, coming at it from that mindset, I think, takes a lot of pressure off people mm -hmm. that may think it's, you know, if you're ahead, then I can't be ahead, too. I've got to get above you. Yeah. Yeah, I have to have one up. <laughs> and that's that's corporate America for you. So, right. you know, I spent a lot of years in corporate America, and it's, it's quiet. Um, I, I wouldn't consider going back. Um, even if they paid me a million bucks, I wouldn't go back. <laughs> um, because it's just you know it's that system just doesn't work anymore uh, for me at all. 
I mean, it, it may be working still for a lot of people, but it doesn't work for me anymore. I, I, I would not have fun and I wouldn't be able to smile as much as I do. And, and I, I wouldn't be able to, to relate to people. Uh, they take themselves way too seriously. Uh, everybody is, you know, it's just I'm like, tight. you know, it's, yeah, it's there's all, <laughs> there's all this, you know, it's, I used to say, I used to say if, um, because all these uptight men I, I used to be working with, um, I even said to a few of them, if, if I could put probably a quarter between your butt, you could probably hold them <laughs> the, entire, the entire day. <laughs> it, would, it would never drop. Because would that's never. How uptight. Exactly. That is so true. <laughs> that is hilarious. <laughs> and, and that's kind of how we actually uh, run our magazine. I mean, uh, we have 30-plus contributing writers, but um, Catherine and I together um, – over the years have learned to observe life and um, basically what she and I do is we, we, we kind of just observe and report things as we see them. We love people watching is one oh, of our wow. favorite things to do. Uh, quite a few of our articles have been spun out of some really observances that we have made. People watching incidences and uh, yeah I mean it's kind of sad that a lot of people go through life really uh, just spun really tight and it can't be fun. <laughs> unfortunately, or well, unfortunately for them, but fortunately for us, we, we kind of, yeah, it does make for a very good story. <laughs> so we're having fun at their So what would happen if those people went away? If we would have nothing to talk about, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yes, we would. Uh, there's tons <laughs> of things to talk about. And I, and I, you know, I really don't, didn't bring these things up uh, just to just to talk about the people that uh, you know are having a, a rough time. Un unfortunately, there, there are a lot of people right now that are having a rough time. And uh, what what I'm trying to do with the network that we have, and and that's really my goal, is to to help people how to be healthy in life, and and how to how to live like in the present moment. And the reason why we call it present is because it is. I think a lot of people uh, try to have control of situations and they get very frustrated and angry uh, when they can't. And really, in, in real life, there's a lot that you don't have control of. Uh, I know my mantra is let go, let God, because there's a lot that I can't control. And I realize that it just makes me crazy <laughs> if I try to control something that I have no control over and I have to let it go. Yeah. Well, the world is an absolute chaos, and people are people are trying to make sense of it. And there's no sense trying to figure out uh, yeah. uh, what makes sense and what doesn't make sense because things are just the way they are, and everybody's frustrated, uh, you know, all day long, um, resisting what's so. And we can't change what's so. I mean, we can get all upset and uptight about it. It is what it is. Well, if we made sense of everything. <laughs> just be boring <laughs> it, it's it's human beings are meaning making machines everything has to mean something and I'll say it doesn't have to mean anything it doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't mean mean anything. Mean anything. It it doesn't mean anything it doesn't mean anything that it doesn't mean anything I what you know it's so funny um, because I'm I love uh, you know so there's some reality TV that I do like to watch uh, some specific programs and people was like, why do you watch that? I mean, that's just, you know, it's doesn't it's nonsense. It doesn't make any sense. It's this, it's that, or whatever. But um, to me, it's just, it's mindless fun to watch. And I'm not watching it to get some type of big meaning out of it or uh, some important lesson. I'm watching it for the entertainment value of it. So mm -hmm. I, I agree that not everything in life has to make sense or have a specific meaning. I mean, you can... You can actually, and there's a lot of enjoyable things that uh, that don't necessarily have uh, specific lessons, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, it's just for relaxation. Exactly. But since you brought up entertainment, um, were you aware that uh, Americans watch anywhere from four to six hours a day um, television? They sitting in front of the television to two. Yes, I have a 14 year old, and I'm very well mm -hmm. aware of that, Steve. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I wonder where they find the time. <laughs> 
how does that how does that serve us? I mean, not well at all. No, it doesn't. Um, and how do you how do you what do you say to your readers? What do you how do you talk about this in terms of how you can help people so that they don't they don't spend four to six hours in front of the TV? I mean, well, I, I I know I don't I don't uh, spend that much time. Um, Usually watching it. Usually my trash TV is, is at night, right before bed. I may grab a glass of wine and look through what I've recorded and just kind of fast forward what I'm interested in. But um, I just think that um, you know, I think you miss too much if you if you watch TV. You you're gonna miss too much of life. Real life is happening. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. We're watching other people's uh, stories and other people's lives. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> or other people's made-up stories. Yes. No, yes. no, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that what I'm doing is, is, is necessarily healthy. I just didn't know <laughs> she, she likes her occasional trash TV. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's funny. I Thank you for um, acknowledging that. Me, and, me and, less, and, but and I, do, I do have a couple of... Uh, Slight addictions. No, I mean, <laughs> yeah. you, you do know that it has been very rainy in Texas, right? So we've had a lot of rainy days. Mm -hmm. We've had a lot of flood days. So what else better to <laughs> flood do? Days. Flood days. So what else better to do than to just sit at home and watch some trash TV? Well, sex come to mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so tired. And since you, that. Since you're talking. <laughs> I'm just so tired. <laughs> I, t I tell you what, I'll let you interview my husband next week, and I promise you he would interview with a smile on his face. <laughs> In fact, if you interviewed him today, he might have a big I smile to on you his face. Mind. <laughs> well, this is, this is funny. I, I, coach a lot of, uh, I coach a lot of CEOs, and I, I had a coaching conversation yesterday with, with a CEO, and, and he's having a, his biggest issue is that um, time runs away from him. It's like it's like he makes all kinds of promises to call this person, call that person, have, be in this meeting, be in that meeting. And, and what ends up happening is whatever is happening in the current time is what takes over. And he forgets all the stuff that he committed to. And so we're working on this. And I, one of the things that came up, and the reason I'm bringing this up is, tell me one thing that you could drop what you are doing right at the moment. Just one thing. What is it? What, what do you think is said? Tell me, you want me to tell you what's happening, something that's happening in my life right now that would be okay to just drop? Or? No, 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 no. I asked him this question. What is it? Tell me one thing that you'd be willing to drop, whatever you're doing right now, because oh. he can't. He can't do it. Just get exactly. walk away from. Oh, I have, a, I have a very long list. I can, I mean, okay. I, can, like, I can put this thing in my ear down right now, Steve, and you wouldn't see me for the rest of the day if I was given a choice. <laughs> Okay. Um, well, well, his answer was was sex. He said for sex he would drop oh, whatever he was doing oh, in the moment. I totally, and, I totally, I believe that. I, believe that <laughs> I, I thought it was an honest answer. So, so if his yeah. wife sent him a text and said home now, and with a picture, he'd stop whatever it was he was doing and go home. And well, you know. Well, he's not married, and he lives in. Uh, <laughs> But, but he, 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 draws dry, he draws drive a Lamborghini, which could be very dangerous. Oh. And, well, yeah, I'm hoping to pull over. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, you, you know, when, 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 I first, when I first looked at your website, I immediately, what, what came to me, I just wanted to share that with you, is what came to me, what took me over, is the energy of happiness and laughter and humor. Like your website is so clear about that, the, the, the home page, that, you know, I saw you, I saw you ladies smiling, having a good time. So to me, that is so important these days because there's so many things to be sad about, mad about, depressed about. There's a lot the, of heavy stuff. You're because right. the, the whole, everything out there is breaking down. I'm sure well, you know that. It, sure it, you know it could easily consume a person. Yes. And, yes. and, and you know, we, it's, you fight it every day, not to be consumed by it. I mean, it's just human nature. But, yeah, so, uh, so, so give our, user, our, our viewers some, some tips as to how do, you, how, how do you, about your beingness, like who you're being, like how do, you, how do you get to be happy, smiling, having a good sense of humor, you know, any moment of the day, like there's no other requirement for it. 
I, I think if you don't take yourself so seriously, you know, there are heavy things that we all deal with. Back when we first started this website, and as I mentioned earlier in our conversation, I was going through a divorce, and there was some really sucky stuff that I was dealing with. And a lot of times I'd call up Cindy, and I'd vent for just a little bit, and sometimes we'd cry about things. And, you know, it always seems that after we kind of got it out, that we would we find take, something to laugh take about. a step back and look at the big picture and, and realize this is only a moment and there would be something humorous in all of it. There would be something that we would find that would have us laughing through our tears. So even in moments that are very heavy and very difficult, I think you have to be able to take a step outside of yourself. It's very important um, to look at things in a broader scope. Have you ever heard that the saying, and it's very popular right now, um, there's an article on the magazine that has like the picture of, but um, it's a, uh, it's, it's like, uh, we're like a honey badger. We don't care. <laughs> you know how the honey badger goes through life and he doesn't really care what people, he's like this lone little marsupial looking rat looking figure and he doesn't care what anybody else is, thinks of what he does. Um, and he's well, just like his own little thing that goes through life. And he does like the wild and crazy stuff. And, you know, if he sees something that's alive and he wants to eat it, oh, he's going to eat it. <laughs> so, I mean, we kind of yeah, like well, have embodied that spirit. Like, you know, we don't, it, we don't necessarily, we have learned not to care so much what other people think. Um, because not everyone's going to like you. And no matter what you do, you will never change that. You know, there are some people, especially women, um, that we've met. Like it didn't. Oh, matter. women! Women! Women are it, tough. I'm telling you, Steve, tough. it would not matter what I did. I could bring uh, a present to her every day. I could, <laughs> like, you know, fall at her feet, and she's not going to like me. So you have to learn not to worry about that kind of stuff. Be yourself. And the ones that are meant to like you are going to like you, and the ones that don't are going to have their own friends and move on and, and really not have anything to do with, uh, you know, you and your life. So. Yeah. I, I actually work with a lot of women um, and, and men also, but this is there's something different. When you put four, five, six, seven women in a group, and when you do the same thing with men, it's a completely different different story. It's a whole di different oh, right. dynamic. Yeah, completely different dynamic. And um, and, and it, it goes along with, um, like when you're in a group, um, you ladies can turn to your friend and say, I'm going to the ba bathroom. Do you want to come with me? <laughs> like that, that, you will never hear that from a guy. <laughs> and <laughs> if another, you do, you should another, worry. <laughs> to another guy. You know, there's just there's just something about women that you can your friendship and your the way you are connected to each other is different. Women bond on a much deeper level. Yeah. And um, so yeah, we don't really think of anything of going to the bathroom together <laughs> and or sharing our lipstick not, or not, whatever. It's not, it's, it's not sexual, and people not even thinking about it as sexual. But no. if if men would do it, like like give you an example, like I grew up in Eastern Europe. And when I was growing up and I was a kid, we kissed all of our friends, including guys. Right. And not only just on the cheek, but on the lips. <laughs> now, can you imagine me doing that, that, that today? That doesn't go over well here. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about gossip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that just wouldn't work at all. And over there, it was, it was the acceptable norm. It was actually... Right. That's what you had to do in order to show that you were close. Right. Yes. And it, you know, it, you got the good old boy syndrome working. You know, it's just you're too worried about what people are going to think, or too uptight to even uh, think about showing that type of uh, love and gratitude uh, towards another male. You, you're afraid that what other people would think, or not even willing to go on out on a limb like that. So. so um, so, so let's go back to this other thing that we talked about, which is, which is that women are really in power right now, and or becoming in power more so than ever before. I see it, I feel it. It's in front of me in the network. It's in front of me everywhere that I go, and I'm curious as to 
how you as women can help men because I feel that men are lost right now. They don't know what they have to do. Mm. Well, you know, like I told you, when we have about 20 or 30 percent of our readers have become men, and when we actually started, we were just a website mainly for women. And we hear from so many men that uh, the readers that we have accumulated, um, that they that's one reason why they love our magazine, because it helps them understand um, the woman in their life. Yes. I, I think a lot of times when a man reads certain articles on our website that are pretty just honest and candid uh, accounts of our journeys, of our specific stories, but they ring very true and similar to things that they've heard their own wives or girlfriends say, but it's more objective coming from someone else. They're not caught up in feeling blamed or responsible, so they take the information at face value more readily. Uh, and so I feel that is a way that we can help men uh, sort of learn to understand women a little bit better. And I, I think that men actually, I think it's easier maybe for them to process it a little bit, coming from like a third party and, and not something that's so personal in their lives. You know, I mean, for since the beginning of time, I mean, men have uh, grown up thinking that their primary role is the head of the family and that they're responsible for this or, uh, you know, I mean, they, they do. They, they have grown up with heavy shoulders. And um, I think that, uh, you know, part of that is kind of intertwined in, um, you know, that subject is, is that I think it's, they are having a problem letting go of maybe some of that. Hmm. Interesting. So, you know how they say that there's always a woman behind every man? Men? Right. So, <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny because I feel that um, all this stuff that's going on with men and in corporate America in terms, of, in terms of what they are interested in primarily is money, control, and power, those three mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> when they go home, um, who really has power is their wives. <laughs> now, the, 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 the corporate managers and the other vice presidents don't get to see that. So there's a lot of pretending that goes on in, in the corporate life. And, and then when, when they go home, it, it kind of changes because... Absolutely. It's a totally different dynamic. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah, women, women, you know, have things that men want that you cannot get unless, unless you you're really nice and you really love them. Like, <laughs> like I, I, <laughs> I went into the man cave and you were asking some questions about which, would, which men would be willing to go into a, a feminine store mm -hmm. and, and buy, and buy, you know, underwear and, and bras. And I mean, I would, I, it wouldn't feminine bother products. me. Products. <laughs> it wouldn't, it wouldn't bother me whatsoever. None, zero. Yes, I mean some men are totally okay with that, but then on the other end of the spectrum, a man wouldn't. There are so many men still that wouldn't even think twice about doing something yeah, like there's that. There's no way. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, and, like, and, and at the same time, they don't even give a thought that their that their own wives are doing have that that they their wives do that for them. You know, it's just right. um, you know it's just part of like the yeah. whole say double standard type of deal. But we thought but, that was a neat question. But do, do you also feel that a lot of those things are just beliefs and, and they not even necessarily are beliefs? That they, those are things we just took on maybe from our parents or from oh, our yeah, teachers? Absolutely. they not necessarily ours. And, right. and do, you, do you feel that that's one of the things everybody is going through right now is to kind of sort out in, in, in terms of becoming who we really are and, and knowing who we are, we, we kind of have to let go. You talked about... Um, I think, Catherine, you talked about, you do this in your seminars, um, that you have to let go what doesn't fit anymore. Right. You, um, I see in the younger generation coming up, I have kids in their 20s now, and I see in their generation 
more ability to let go and more comfort in being themselves and doing things different than how their parents did it. So I, I am hopeful for how things are changing, but um, it is difficult a, a lot of times for people to change their perceptions of, of how it's supposed to look. You know, our fathers did things a certain way and it's hard to realize sometimes that you don't have to do it the same way. Well, I think that people think that it's difficult, but I, but what they realize, they don't realize is that it's really not difficult. It's very freeing once you finally figure well, it out. And let yeah. go. They are well, stuck well, on the mindset that it, it's just something so difficult that they couldn't possibly fathom, uh, you know, changing when in actuality, the change itself is what's so simple and freeing. Yeah, what 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 rings true for me is what's difficult is the pretending, is the pretense that it has to be the way somebody taught us it has to be. But they don't realize and, that. And 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 sometimes no, I think sometimes people inside feel that there is something off about it, but they but they don't know what to do or how to they move conform. forward. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. What you're saying it kind of it kind of goes against the grain of what they how they see things or what they believe. Yeah, because everybody that they hang out with have the same belief. You know, we attract the same type of people around us, and so they they don't want to like stand out because it's too risky. And I right. and, and I love you know I know you love you probably love taking risks. I do. I I rather <laughs> work outside of the outside of my comfort zone than within my comfort zone exactly. anymore. One of my favorite quotes is by T. S. Eliot. And it, uh, let's see if I can get it right, uh, only those who will risk going too far can possibly find out how far one can go. And I, <laughs> yeah. that, that quote really speaks to me. Yeah, um, no, no, no doubt. I mean, I, I told you I think that I, I learned English in New York. So everybody in New York told me for three years, go west, young man, go west. And guess <laughs> what? Nobody over there ever does. And so I, so I listened and I went to Los Angeles and uh, it's you know it's it's just one of those examples that you know everybody in New York has grown up that that's the East and that's where you were born and you gotta just hang out there you know and they all want to go but nobody ever does it. That's true. That's really <laughs> so true. <laughs> and, I, on the other hand, was born in Texas and I'll probably die in Texas. Ah, uh, I've been I've been everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> All of all over the world and all over the country. So well, I've been everywhere, but I'll probably just come back here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I lived in New York. I lived in LA. I lived in San Diego. I lived in Portland, Oregon. I lived in Tennessee. So I kind of checked out pretty much all different areas of the country. Yeah, I, you have. I for about six or seven years, I traveled just about every weekend of the year, and and I would go someplace different, and um, and I, I I have enjoyed those places, but always enjoyed more coming home. So what do you like specifically about the South? What stands out for you? Oh, I really, it's sort of cliche, but I really do believe that the people in the South are more open to strangers and friendlier to strangers. I've spent a reasonable amount of time up in New York and it's a completely different uh, interaction between people. Uh, I, I think that New Yorkers get a little bit of a bad rap because they come off as abrasive, even though I think in their hearts they're not really feeling that way. But in the South, people are just very warm, and um, I love that. Well, I mean, yeah. in New York, if you honk at someone, it's not a big deal. If you if you honk at someone in Texas, <laughs> something's wrong. <laughs> you better make sure you packed your gun. <laughs> <laughs> there's something. There's something on the rag, on the rag behind you. Exactly. Right? Yeah. That little rag back there behind your head. It's like it's coming down. What'd you say? What was that? <laughs> you know. You know what? The, one of the hardest things for me to get used to was. Uh, you can probably relate to this in New York. Is that I could just go see someone that I wanted to go see without an appointment. The way I grew up is you could just go to anybody's house without an invitation, knock on the door, and you were welcomed with a drink and with food. Well, if you call a little bit ahead of time, we'll do the same here. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to. But I have to call. See, in, exactly. when I, well, when I, when just, I grew up, when I grew up, I didn't have to call. Is what I'm saying. That's you, just good you, etiquette. That's just good were, etiquette, you were, Steve. You were welcome. Doesn't matter what. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that is, uh, it's, you know, we, we see it as just being, uh, uh, you know, having good etiquette and just calling ahead and mm -hmm. saying, um, even if I'm on my way or I'll be there in 10 minutes, giving them a little bit of heads up. Now, you know, a good true Southerner, if they tell you, bless your heart, that could mean so many things. <laughs> it could be, seriously, bless your heart, you know, I love you, I feel for you, or it could mean, oh my goodness, what an idiot. <laughs> bless his heart. <laughs> I, I, I lived in Tennessee for three years. I, I don't, I, I forgot all of those things. Right. <laughs> or one of the things that we'll do between, especially close friends, if something's going on in a room and we'll look at each other and go, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what that means. And, no, I don't. <laughs> it just means that you understand each other. You understand like no words, words, no oh, okay. words need to be spoken. It's like there's no words. You understand each other completely, just looking at each other, what's going on in the room. <laughs> oh, okay, got it. All right, well, guess what? We're running out of time. So I want to give you the opportunity to mention your website and any other contact information that you would like to have our uh, viewers have. Okay, um, thank you for that. It is Woman's Insight, and I will spell that. It's called, it is spelled W-O-M-A-N-S-I-N-S-I-T-E, womansinsight.com is the website. You can join the in list and get information about uh, new articles and things that we have coming up. Uh, contact phone number is 281-794-8111, and we'd love to hear from any and everybody. Yes, and a lot of people think that we're, we are a, uh, a, a magazine just about women, but we're not that. We are a magazine that discusses anything and everything from a woman's perspective. Okay, got it. Well, thank, <laughs> thank you so much. You ladies were absolutely fantastic, and thank you for being the inspiration that the both of you are to humanity and all the work that you do every day to make this place a better place. Well, thank you for thank your you time and attention for having us, Steve. Thank you.